green light now. Amen. Good morning. I want all the children to come up here and join me. All the children. Along with Mr. Scott, Mr. Nation, Nash. Up here, get around me. Come on, come on, get up close. All you adults, let me, I'm going to talk to the adults after all y'all are gone. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Everybody stretch your hands out toward the kids. These are our inheritance, you guys. These are our inheritance. These are our inheritance. Are you listening to me? Every one of these children is a gift from God. Now, today, moving forward, we're going to have the children with us during praise and worship. And before the preaching, we're going to speak a word of blessing over them and pray over them. And then we're going to release them. Mr. Scott's going to be our primary teacher moving forward here for a while, except I know in June he's going to be out on the Royal Ranger uh, uh, fishing trip. And so we'll look at that when we come to it. And uh, anyway, uh, so he's going to be, but I'm going to be needing helpers, so I'm calling y'all. All I want to hear is, yes, pastor, I'll be glad to serve. I'll be glad to serve. I'll be glad to invest in the kids in this church. Amen. Are you with me? All right, let's stretch your hands out. Let's bless these kids. Lord, we bless these children. We thank you for each and every one of them. We just say, Lord, bless you. The Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace. We bless Mr. Scott and the workers that are going to be helping him in Children's Church. We thank you, Father, for our kids. They are our gift. They are our blessing. They're something you have entrusted to our care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Follow Mr. Scott, everybody, and you guys have a good morning. We'll see you in a while. Now, the toddlers and the younger children, bless you, baby, my granddaughter. Uh, now, moving forward, uh, the toddler group meets. They'll be meeting at 10 o'clock as normal, but the older children will come into the service with us in our worship and our time in the presence of the Lord, and then we'll dismiss them to go uh, to, uh, to the children's ministry where they'll have a focused teaching and instruction in the Word of God. Amen. All right. So normally all the younger children from, uh, you know, plus one day to about uh, five, I believe it is. Anyway, they'll be meeting and having their normal classes, but those six and above will be in the sanctuary with us. And this is what we'll do moving forward. Uh, we're in the season of change at Life Changer Church. Uh, it's good change. It's good change. I want to say congratulations, Sherry. Thank you so much for helping us today. All the worship team, the band, working together. Had a wonderful rehearsal on Wednesday night. We appreciate it. We are talking with others and interviewing people and talking to people. And, uh, you know, we're looking for a certain kind of thing in worship. We want to come into the presence of God every time we meet. We don't want to have good Sundays and bad Sundays. Now, a lot of that doesn't hinge on these guys. A lot of that hinges on us. Do we come prepared to come in? Now, I'm not even preaching, so i got to hurry. And, uh, but we're in a season of change, and change is okay. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes we don't particularly like it. But it's okay. Because God's taken us somewhere. This morning on my way into the church, I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, how many churches do you know that have miracle in their name, miracle center, miracle this, miracle that. How many of you think are expecting miracles today? I said, Lord, you know, why are you asking me this? He said, because I'd like for Life Changer to become a miracle center. I said, well, are we changing the name? No. You know, Miss Jane and I, we were toying with the idea of changing the name to Serious Church. We're not about fluff here. I mean, we're just not. And, uh, you know, sometimes I've asked God, God, just let me be fluffy. <laughs> it's not who we are. And uh, so, but uh, I really believe we're in a season of miracles. And having said that now, tonight we're going to have a miracle service. Sister Joanna, was, they're just going to be here all evening and afternoon. And I just felt like 
Let's go for it. I know it's Mother's Day, and normally we don't have a worship experience on Mother's Day because mothers are doing mother's thing, and you're doing things for your mother, and I am perfectly in agreement with that. I love that. You should overabound and flow for your moms to support them, love them, bless them. But Jenny and I, and Joanna and her husband, we are going to be here, and we're going to have church tonight. At 6 o'clock, if you'd like to come and be a part of that, we'd love for you to come. Now, we've already had reports of a couple of miracles that have happened since Friday. Amen. Who hollered that? There you go. Connie, is Connie in here this morning? No, she's helping my wife and, and toddlers today. But she had a miracle. I was going to have her tell you, but she's serving, and I'm happy for her to be serving. So, this is Sister Joanna uh, Herndon, and she's been here doing the ladies' meeting on Friday night and Saturday morning. And then uh, she's going to minister the word this morning. When she finishes, we'll receive an offering for the ministry, and then we'll have prayer time. Now, let me tell you how this works. I am very sensitive, particularly since my wife is now doing the toddlers, uh, about workers in children's ministry. So here's the deal. Once I give the benediction, I, you know, and we come back for prayer, it, you go get your kids and come and stay as long as you want to. We'll stay with you, and we will pray for everyone who wants to have prayer. Okay, and uh, but we want to be honor our servants of God who are serving our children today, and uh, you know just think of it like this: my wife and her team this morning will be back there with your four-year-old for two hours. Well, you just you just rushing. You 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 know I've been accused of a lot of things. But frustrating my children's workers is not something I'm going to be accused of. Because I appreciate their service. Do you appreciate the people that are serving your kids? I appreciate their service and I try to be sensitive to those needs. So we're in transition in children's ministry. Miss April's still on a cruise ship today, but uh, she's coming to the end of her service. We appreciate everything she's ever done. Her and Greg have been heroes and champions and they have done a terrific job. She's going to be doing a vacation Bible school this year. They're not leaving. They're not bailing out. It's just a season of change. Okay? She still wants to continue to serve. But she's not going to be. So, I'm going to be doing the scheduling out of the office. And so, what is the answer to my question? I've already given it to you. Yes, Pastor, I'd be glad to help. You'll be hearing from the office. It'll either be me, Melissa, or one of the workers... We're going to fill up the calendar. We'll get that done. All right? Amen. So, let me invite Sister Joanna to the pulpit and uh, bring you the Word of God this morning. Boy, we've enjoyed having her. We have enjoyed having her uh, this weekend. For some reason, my brother, I apologize in front of the people. For some reason, I cannot get your name to stick in my brain. And this is Joanna's husband. His name is Randy, and today is his birthday. So everybody say, happy birthday, Randy. I heard the pastor say next Sunday's his birthday. It's going to be the best Sunday ever. So I told my husband, then today's the best Sunday ever for you, because today's his birthday. Amen. Thank you for being here. We appreciate each and every one of you being here. And we know that when we come to meet with God, God meets with us. And I love the presence of the Lord, and the worship was awesome. Awesome. So great job, worshipers. I mean, when you can feel the presence of the Lord, that is awesome. And that's what we come for. Amen. And so thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. Stay. Stay right here with us, filling us with your love and showing us and guiding us. We love you, Holy Spirit. And we can't do, it's not church if you're not here. So thank you. Stay in Jesus' name. Just want you to know before we get into the word that I have impartation materials me and my husband do out here on the table. We are 100% full-time evangelists, so this helps keep us on the road. Also helps with missions. Go to Colombia and Africa. No, no telling where all the Lord, wherever he says go, I want to go. I want to follow him. I want to be in the places he wants. And 
400 people this year in Columbia, over 400 really, got saved. Many was delivered of demons and a lot of miracles. So we thank you, Lord, for that. And people who've been sowing into our ministry and giving become a part of all of this. And so just to tell you, I am the daughter of Jack Coe. He had the largest tent in the world, held 22,000 people in the tent with another 10 to 20,000 standing outside. He wrote his own life story book while he was alive. He was an alcoholic who got saved, got locked up into nine different nut wards because they thought he was crazy in the army for serving God. And we are crazy. I told the people, well, the people call us crazy. We are. We're out of our mind because we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. He said, this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus, right? So tell him, you're right. I don't have my own mind anymore. I have his mind. And so if you want to know more about who this man was and how he became one of the uh, ABCs of revival that they called A.A. Allen, William Branham, Jack Coe, and was in the God's Generals, known as one of the, the most boldest men of faith. Oral Roberts said that was the boldest man of faith I ever knew. And that was my father. So if you want to know more about him, this is his own life story book. He also wrote a book called Curing the Incurable. And this is a very good book on healing and many miracles are written up in here of people who got healed. That's there. We have bandanas that we pray over for healing, deliverance, salvation. You can give those as a gift to people. We have bookmarks. We have cards with DVDs inside. Wedding, birthday, God's love, God's forgiveness. I think a card usually costs you $4 now in a store or 6 You get a card and a DVD inside with pictures, beautiful scriptures for $10. That's why I say, why shop at Walmart? Your, your seed's not going to grow at Walmart. Shop with us, your seed will grow, and then you go to Walmart more, right? Amen. We do take credit cards, so there is inside a box out there. We won't be out there to tell you. That's why I'm telling you the information now. So fill this out. Put your credit card information. Be sure and put your phone number and put your amount. I mean, you don't want me to put my amount, do you? It could be a whole lot more. Amen. And, of course, we also have CDs and DVDs. One of my favorite sermons of my dad's is, God will set your fields on fire. You know, somebody's not saved, needs to get saved. They listen to this, they'll either get saved or wish they had of. A man told me, said, ma'am, ma'am, you need to put a warning label on that. I said, what, on a CD? Yes, put a warning label for people not to listen to that in their car. And I said, but that's why people buy CDs to listen to in their car. Not that one, not that one. I said, why not? He said, because I had to pull over and get in the floorboard four different times crying out to God. So I hope you have to. I didn't put a warning label. I did warn you. Amen. <laughs> also, tent. This uh, shows the tent revival. This shows the old hairdos, the old tent back then, the sawdust, the old cars. If some of you men like to look at old cars. And it shows the miracles. People coming out of wheelchairs, off of hospital beds, cancer being pulled off of face, deaf ears being opened. You want to see some of those things? It's in this DVD called Divine Healing on Trial. You can see all of that as well as hear some good old-fashioned preacher back in the 40s and 50s. Amen. Remember, the quality of the film back then didn't have but one camera, and it's not like it is today. So keep that in mind when you do purchase that. Oh, that, that doesn't, okay? So that way you know. We don't have fancy angles, all that. It's just showing straight healing lines. Also, we have bracelets with scriptures. I thought it was something. I picked up the one that says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see. And others are scriptures. And I know the Bible says thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But mothers, we can wear it on our arm too and help us some. Amen. So it's Mother's Day. If you forgot a gift, go back out there real quick. Get something for your mother. And that way you didn't really forget. Right? Amen. Also, I have some uh, sermons, Arise, Take Up Your Bed and Walk, Overflow, and some other messages that I have preached myself that is on the table. And, of course, my favorite is the Disciple Cross, and this is a very good witnessing tool, and this is adjustable. Okay, I got it tangled. This is for men, women, boys, and girls. As you can see, it goes up and down. 
But the great thing I like about this is somebody walks up to you and says, hey, I like your necklace. You can take it off and say, let me tell you the story. This represents the whip they beat Jesus with. Got their attention now. This wrapped around these nails represents the crown of thorns that went around his head. And these nails represent the spikes that went into his hands and feet. And he did this for you that you may be saved, healed, and delivered. And I'd like to pray with you because it's not an accident that you said something to me about my necklace. Amen? So it's great gift to give someone. It's also great to give for yourself to be a witness if you've been afraid to witness. Amen. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help today. Let the words that I speak come out of me. And the things that I say be the words that you won't say. Lord, refresh us, renew, restore us. We thank you for this day of Mother's Day that we get together together. And we thank you for praying mothers that say, go to church with me. What do I want for Mother's Day? I want you in church. We thank you for mothers who pray and who care and mothers who have prayed for us, that all of us are here because of someone who has prayed for us. And so we ask you for the anointing to flow and the things you want said to be said and our hearts be stirred that we will not be the same in Jesus name. Amen. I'd like to read you a little something here before we get in. Uh, we're probably going to touch on 1 Samuel 1 some, but I'd like to read you something about real mothers. Real mothers are special people. They do not get to eat a whole meal by themselves or drink a cold drink without floaters in it. Real mothers know their kitchen utensils will end up in a sandbox or outside digging up a dirt, some dirt. Real mothers often have sticky fingers, sticky floors, filthy ovens, and happy kids. Real mothers know that dried Play-Doh does not come out of carpets. Real mothers sometimes ask, why me? And gets their answer when a little voice says, because I love you the best. Real mothers know that a child's growth is not measured by height or years or grades. It's marked by the progression of mama to mom to mother. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for being wonderful spiritual mothers. We appreciate you very much. Amen. And I am glad today to talk about my mother and mothers. It's because of my mother I am here today preaching the gospel. It's because of my mother's prayers. Many of us today can say someone prayed for us. We're here because someone was praying for us, standing in the gap and crying out for us. And many of us, somebody can say, well, I'm not a mother. But you have a mother. And so that's why we celebrate this day. Even all of you have a mother or you wouldn't be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Save for the 90 and nine in the fold. Save for the night was dreary and cold. But said the shepherd, when counting them all, one sheep is missing. There should be one more. So the shepherd went out to search for his sheep. And all through the night on the rocky steep, he saw. There in the night, he heard a faint cry of the lost sheep, all ready to die. Then in his arms to shield from the cold, he brought the lost sheep back to the fold. So the shepherd went out to search for his sheep. And
and all through the night on the rocky steep he saw till he found me with love arms he surrounded me and i want to say it again and i was that one lost sheep say it with me and i was that one lost sheep you see mother's day is a very special day for me because it was on mother's day that i came back to the lord it's a time I love to celebrate because it's a beautiful time. My mom stayed in prayer and constantly crying out for me. Even many times she would turn to people and preachers that would be in the house and be visiting. And I would run by the house and they would be in the living room. And, oh, Joanna, come on in and meet. And she, I'd think, oh, no, she's got the preachers here. She's got all these praying people here. I'm not going to stay here very long. Hi, Mom. I love you. Well, honey, come on in and sit down. I thought, oh, no, they're going to all gather around me. I was raised in Pentecost. I know how they do. They gather around you, and they keep you there till you hot dog get it. <laughs> so I got to figure out how to tell her I got to get out of here. I'm here to tell you, Mamas, don't stop praying. I'm here to tell you, men and women of God, don't stop praying for that lost sheep. Don't stop praying for those loved ones. Don't stop praying for that friend, that cousin, that one that you are crying out for. Don't you stop. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. God is softening their heart, and he's working on it because of your prayers. And I'll never forget many times, oh, mama, I just came by to drop this off. Let me, or I got to do this. I just come to tell you I love you. I got to go. Many times people to this day would come up to me and say, you know, when you ran out the door, you might not have remembered me, but I was at your mother's house. And she would say, that's my little Joanna, and she's supposed to preach, but she's running from God. Would y'all help me pray for her? And she said, we'd get down, and your mother would be in there just weeping and crying. Said, we thought we were just going to take hands, say a little prayer. She said, next thing we know, we're in a 30-minute or more intercessory prayer service because your mom is slinging snot and crying. God, get my little Joanna, God. And she had agreement with other people because the Bible says when any two agree on earth, it shall be done in heaven. You see, we have a problem today. Many times in our church that people, as it has happened in society, want surrogate mothers. Many people give up and they say, you pray for them. You do this. You find somebody who's a good prayer warrior, who's a good intercessor. Or you think, hey, that's what pastors are for. Hey, pastor, I need Johnny to get saved. Would you pray for Johnny? And we give that and expect them to be the surrogate. And if things aren't happening, pastor, aren't you praying for Johnny? As a pastor, I'd have to say, no, aren't you? Or yes, maybe I am, but it's not working as good because... Maybe we need to be doing this together. Amen. My mother didn't turn it over to somebody. Thank goodness she didn't. Thank goodness that she stayed on bended knees crying out, kept saying, my Joanna's going to preach. See, things may not look like they're working like they are. Yet, as we've been talking in the women's conference, can these bones live? I don't know, God, you know. Prophesy the bones will live. What we need to do is begin to speak to those bones. My son, my daughter's coming in. My grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, my spouse is coming in. Some people say, well, if I'd have just got a Boaz, or if I'd have just got a Ruth, then my marriage would be okay. Well, if you want a Boaz, it's time you start building your Boaz up. It's in your house. You need to build it up. Your Ruth is right there. You need to start building that person up because they're right there. Amen. And God wants you to have. He's already. Well, I think I made a mistake. No, the problem is you're just always wanting your way and it's time to do it God's way. <laughs> Amen. And so my mother would continue to pray. I, I, I would get tickled. We did pastor at one time, and my husband did most of the preaching. And my husband will help pray at the end. He's very anointed to God, and there's a whole lot I could tell you. But I want to just kind of stay with this message, what the Lord gave me today. I felt like he 
kind of changed it, and this is what he wants to speak to you about today. But people would come to me and my husband, and they say, agree with me in prayer with Johnny, so that Johnny gets saved. Okay, well, me and my husband's walking the floor, and we're praying. But, you know, you look out the door, and you see the person who says, agree with me in prayer, Johnny gets saved, and they got the boat headed to the lake. I'd have to say I think agreement's over. I'm in here slinging snot, crying for Johnny, and you're going to the lake fishing, having fun. Nothing wrong with fishing and having fun. But when you come to me to carry your burden to be your surrogate mother, there's a problem there. God has called you to be the carrier. He said that we are carrier women. He has designed within us to be carriers as he has also designed within us to birth things. That's what he's also done for us men and women as and boys and girls as carriers spiritually and to birth things. Amen. But some of us are like Hannah. Hannah in the Bible couldn't have a baby. It was barren. Sometimes we run into situations where things are dead and barren in our life. Does not seem to be producing anything. Doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Doesn't seem to be adding to what we need. And we're sitting here in a barren situation. It could be marriage. It could be job. It could be your children, your grandchildren. It could be your neighbors. It could be your own life. And you're just barren right now Hannah didn't want to stay that way Hannah said there can be a change and there's one way it is I'm going to the throne of grace boldly in a time of need of help for grace and mercy Jesus made a way in our day today that we can do that and there was a feast going on. This was a year of celebration just like today at Mother's Day. This is the day of celebration this is the time to come in. Woo, glory to God, hot dog. We got it. We feel good. Mama's here. Mama's got some for kids coming to church today. It's a celebration. We want to thank you, Mama. And we're celebrating. And that's what this was. This was a yearly feast that they celebrated to bring their offerings to the Lord here in 1 Samuel 1. And Elkin has been given gifts out as they did as they also brought sacrifice. And they go to the feast. And this feast is like a party. I always say church is like a party. It doesn't have to be just Sunday. It doesn't have to be just once a year on Mother's Day. There, I know there's CME Christians. I know I had to ask that once too. What is a CME Christian? But I found out it's Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Those are the ones that show up only on those days. Amen. And so... This celebration was a time of celebration before bringing things and, and celebrating the king. But Hannah was barren and Paniah, who was the other wife, had lots of children. In fact, the Bible said she even provoked Hannah because she didn't. She would even say, ha ha, I've got kiddos and you don't. And even when uh, Elkin would give out gifts to let them know, here's for the children, and here's for you, and here's for you. And, and yet I could see Paniah, yeah, you don't have any extra ones to get extra gifts because you don't have no kids. <laughs> and the Bible said it caused Hannah to weep because it provoked her so. And Hannah was weeping. And Elkin said, what are you crying about? I've given you a worthy portion, and I love you. You're special to me. Why are you crying? And she said, I want my own baby. I want my own baby. You see, there is a place that we can come into saying, I'm not taking this no more. I'm tired of being barren. I'm tired of things not coming to, to birth that should be coming to birth. I'm tired of things not happening that should. And I'm crying out, God, he knows. My Joanna's coming in. My Johnny's coming in. My Susie's going to get right. Timothy's going to get back to preaching like he's supposed to. Come on. She knew that nothing had birthed, but she still said, I'm not going to let this stop me. She came to a point she was so desperate to not be barren anymore that when they went to the feast and they're all uh, celebrating, woo! <laughs> Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Uh. 
ain't nobody like a Holy Ghost party. Well, because we're in a Pentecostal church where the Holy Ghost and fire moves. So it's exciting to be and everybody's having fun. But Hannah's crying. <laughs> I'm sure people are saying, can you do something with her, please? Elkin, she is ruining it. We're all trying to eat and celebrate and have it. And she's like, ooh, 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 baby, put my own baby. She finally said, I'm not staying here. She left because now she couldn't eat. Now she couldn't sleep. She had come to a point that I am not stopping. I'm desperate to God to answer this prayer. And she stepped out from the feast and she ran to the house of God. The Bible said that she got down on her knees and she wept. I can see probably when she hit the door, just like some of you when you hit the door here at Life Change, you're like, whew, he's here. Whew. And something just inside of you is jumping, but yet there's a cry. Yet inside of you there's an emptiness. Yet inside of you there's something barren, something that says that I can't take it no more. And I see you in desperation and you run and you throw yourself down. And the Bible said she wept. See, there's times we come to church and we weep. Sometimes even during worship, some of us were dabbing some tears. Okay, I'm weeping a little bit. God, this is touching my heart, but you're messing up my makeup. <laughs> and so sometimes we weep. But the Bible said she didn't just weep. You know, sometimes we'll brush back a few tears and we'll brush back what Holy Spirit's trying to do because we just don't want to mess it all up right now. We don't want to sling snot. But when you get desperate, you don't care. She not only wept, but she wept sorely. Ever been to that place where you just wept and you wept sorely and there's just so much weeping in you? But the Bible did, said that not only did she weep, she wept sorely, but she wept till she poured her soul out to God. That's a point of total surrender. That's flesh dying and him living. When we finally say, I'm through. You can have it all. I'm through, God. It's time for something to birth within me. I'm through, God, with what's going on. It's time for the barren places to begin to have birth again. God, you made us carriers as you have spiritually. You've had made us to birth. Even when he came to Mary, who was a virgin, and he said, you're going to have a baby, and you're going to name him Jesus. And she didn't say, this is impossible, which we say when God tells us we're going to do something. God, you got to move. And we're barren and now we're weeping. We're weeping sorely. And we pour our soul out. And he said, you're going to go across the nations and preach. Excuse me. <laughs> you just said you wanted something to birth. Well, I don't know about that. I wasn't asking that. <laughs> Mary didn't say that. She said, be it unto you. Whatever your will is, Lord. This is the place we need to be. If we've been in barren places, it's time to start saying, be it unto you, whatever your will is, Lord. You see, because of my mom taking that time and someone else taking the time to pray for you, we're all sitting here today. And I was that one lost sheep. Now here we are today, life changers. Life changers because he's changing us from glory to glory to glory. But back to my story, Mother's Day. I thought, okay, I'll go. I don't really want to. I've been able to run and run good. I've been able to hide. But see, some of us, when I even tell some of the others when I'm praying for them or for their children, God's got a bungee cord on you. You see, the problem with some of you is you got too much salt to be any good to the world. So you might as well stay here. Because if you get out there in the world, you got too much dirt to be any good to the church. You're a mess. That's where I was. I get drunk, party with people and preach to them. They get saved. And I'm still just in the world because I had too much salt to be any good. And they'd even say to me, well, why are you doing this? I don't know. It's called rebellion. I didn't say that, but that's what it's called. It's a rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Why you, I don't know. Well, you, we're, the reason we're saved is because of you. You need to get right. Pray for me. 
My mother would invite me a lot to go to church, and once in a while I'd finally okay, and I'd go, but then I had too much dirt to be any good to the church. Oh, scriptures would rise up in me. Songs would sing, and I'd weep. And I'd think, no, God, because I'm just going to fail you again. No, God, I'm just going to mess up again. No, God, I just don't think I can do it today. I'm not sure. So finally on this Mother's Day, I finally said, okay, I'll go. It's a huge church. My aunt kept hounding me. Come on, you need to go to church. Then I called her that morning and said, oh, I can't. I'm just tired. I can't make it. I'll do it another time. I know I promised you. Your word's always been good. I said, I know. I'm just messing up. Finally, I hung up the phone. I couldn't go back to sleep. I called back and said, fine, save me a seat. I'll be there. Huge church. Got in there, and they were doing their programs. I thought, yes. I'm going to get out of here okay. They had points. They had specials. They recognized the oldest, the youngest. They did all those things, probably 45 minutes of programs. Yes. Won't be long. We'll get out of here. And then the preacher got up. He said, the Lord changed my message. He said, I was a sheep. I, I used to tend sheep. And he said, there is a scripture in the Bible that 99 safe in the fold, but there was one who was lost. He said, I, I took care of sheep, so I know how it works with sheep. Sheep get their head down, and they get to eating in the grass. And if they're not paying attention, and the shepherd doesn't see them going off because there's so many sheep there, and they're so busy, they're not paying attention to the other sheep around them. He said, pretty soon, they're so busy eating and carrying on to get to greener pastures to go to something else, and they're, they're in another fence territory. They're in another area and another area. And pretty soon, when a sheep looks its head up, it's like... Where are all the other sheep and how did I get here? What happened? And now the little sheep is lost and it's shivering and it's confused and it's scared. And it doesn't know where to go and what to do because it's not with everybody else anymore. It's all by itself. And I thought, that's me, God. I never intended to leave you. I always said growing up, I'm going to do this. And where I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll say, that's me. And now here I am, that little sheep way out here in one of these fields that I never intended to get away from. Then he began to talk about the prodigal. And the prodigal son who went away said, give me all my goods. See, when you leave, you got goods in you no matter what you do. That's that salt. Give me all my goods. And we go out there and waste it. And the devil tries to take all of it out of us. Get in the pig pen. Get to stinking. St sin stinks. We get to stinking so bad. But something happened to the man. And the prodigal son. The Bible said he came to his right mind. Those that's out in the world right now. Are not in their right mind. They're blind. And they can't see. But the Bible says, you know why he came to his right mind? Because there's a father standing at the road, waiting with a robe and a ring and shoes and a fatted cap. There's a father and a mother who's praying. And he's standing there waiting for you to come back down that road. My son's coming home. My daughter's coming home. My grandchildren are coming home. My grandson, all of my family, they're coming home. He said he came to his right mind said, it's better in my father's house than it is here. And he ran back. He said, you're just in time. He didn't say, well, you know what? You've been running all these years. Shame on you. He said, you made it just in time. All the laborers went out. And the one that even came in the last hour, they all got the same penny. You made it just in time. I got a robe, a ring, a fatty cap, and we'll sit you at the table. You get to eat the king's table. You get to eat the same turkey leg Pastor Ted is eating. You get to eat the same mashed potatoes, the same green beans. I thought, not me. I, no, I thank you, Lord. I'm back, but I can't. He said, sit up at the table. I brought you back. I restore what the canker worms destroyed. Wow. Talked about that, but one thing that finally got me. He talked about Ira Stanfield's wife. They used to sing that old song. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room. 
at the cross for you. He said, Ira Stanfield, and any of you who knew back in those days, the anointing was so strong when that song would be played, hundreds came to the altar. And when she sang, that anointing was so strong of the song they wrote, hundreds and thousands came to the altar to give their heart to Jesus. And there was a talent agent sitting out in the church. And he watched as the people drew, and he said, woman, you're talented. I'm going to make you famous. He never knew it was God in the anointing. He thought it was her talent. It was her voice. And boy, I'm going to make you a star. I'm going to take you somewhere and I'm going to build you up. I'm going to build your name. And I'm going to take you places you've never seen or known. And somehow that seemed to draw into temptation. And her husband begged her, don't go, don't go. And she said, I'm going. I'm going somewhere. You see, it wasn't just that man saying it. Already probably pride, something had already stepped in, and that was easy for the devil just to push that last button. But he didn't end up making her real famous, and he didn't end up putting her in all these places. The only places she ended up was in nightclubs singing. One night driving on her way home, she hit a car DWI and died. When I heard that, I said, God, that's going to be me if I don't get back. They're going to say, that's Jack Coe's daughter, and she knew better. That's Jack Coe's daughter who used to sing in sign language and preach when the time she was 16 years old and quoted scriptures and taught children's church, and she preached to people even as a little two-year-old and five-year-old, and now here she is out partying and carrying on, and I thought, that's going to be my story. And I shook. I shook in that pew, and I cried, and I shook. I said, God, but every time I try to come back, I fail you. Every time I try and I go to church with my mother, it doesn't last long. I don't want to just come back to you again and it not last. I don't want to try this again and I fail you again because then it gets worse. Every time I fail you, I just don't know if I can do it. And so I said to him, if you'll take me back, I'll try as hard as I can every day to live for you. I will try. I can't promise you because I seem to fail, but I will try with everything in me. And to this day, church, I'm still trying. To this day, I am still saying, thank you, Jesus. Another day with you. Another hour with you. Another time. And when I step into a day of Mother's Day, I celebrate this time knowing the King of kings and Lord of lords of my life. Because I said, yes, Lord. Stand with me, please. It's not an accident you're here today. Holy Spirit brought you and brought you for such a time as this. And I cannot pass it on yet until I make sure if there's anyone with every head bowed and every eye closed. Anyone here today, maybe you are that lost sheep. Or maybe you've never even made him Lord of your life. Maybe you haven't surrendered. You've only been half-hearted instead of whole-hearted because God wants your whole heart. I'm here today because the Holy Spirit brought this for such a time as this, and he brought you for such a time as this. this is not, none of this is an accident. And if you say, Sister Joanna, that's me. I'm that lost sheep. I'm that prodigal son. I'm that one that has never asked the Lord. Or I have not been faithful and I am playing around and I'm half in and half out. One foot in the world, one foot in the church. I don't want that no more. Today, I want to try as hard as I can and surrender my life to Jesus. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand high. We want to pray with and for you. I see that hand. Amen. I see that hand. Anyone else? Raise your hand high. It's not an accident. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't want to embarrass anyone, but sir, if you don't mind, I'd love for you just to come on up. Come on. <laughs> We're glad you're here. You made it just in time. Hallelujah. What's your name? Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, we're going to pray with and for you. Yes, come on, David. Be great. 
We could just have a couple of men to come up here with Kyle and pray with and for him. And church, while they're praying with and for him, and if there's anyone else, come on. Anyone else? If you got your hand up and you want to come, come on. You don't have to wait. You don't have to hesitate. It's a great day for you today. You can celebrate with me every year at Mother's Day. Amen. Now, we're all going to pray together in case there's somebody here that didn't come up, and they should have while they're praying with him and, and talking to him. Every head bowed and every eye closed, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come in today, and I need you to help me. I need you to stay in my heart. I'm tired of playing around. I'm tired of running from you. I'm tired of doing it my way when it's supposed to be your way. I want you to be Lord of my life. And so today, I say, Lord, I'm going to try as hard as I can. And I'm going to surrender myself to you today. To every day commit to try. To serve you and obey you because you first loved me. I love you so much. Thank you for loving me, wanting me, forgiving me, and coming hunting me down. I'm found. I'm found. I'm yours in Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer and surrendered that prayer... And you meant it from your heart, just not your head. God's doing something in your life. I thank you. I love you. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, everybody say, I love, I love Pastor, Ted. Pastor Ted. Now, there was more than one person that was supposed to respond to that invitation. Don't make me call your name. There's at least two or three that I know. You've prayed, you've recommitted, but there's something, there's a grace in this word today. There's a grace in this word today, and you're feeling the tugging of the Lord on your heart. Listen to me, listen to me, hear my counsel. Don't despise the day of grace. Because of fear, because of, you know, intimidation of what will somebody think or any of that stuff. I know how the enemy works. Come on up here. Stand on the, on the line, please. Bruce. We're just going to wait a minute. Come on. God's talking to your heart. God's talking to your heart. Listen, listen, we need to learn as a church to respond to the drawing of the Holy Spirit. I was in a meeting one time, and I was the most saved person in the room, and the guy gave the invitation, and nobody was moving. God said, go to the altar. I said, Lord, I'm, everybody knows me. They're going to think I've done some bad sin or something. It wasn't any negotiation. Go to the altar. I got up to the altar, and the preacher got down. What are you up here for? I said, I don't have a clue. I'm being obedient. As far as I know, I'm saved. I, 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 he just said, come. Listen, if the Holy Spirit's drawing you, you need to respond. You need to respond. There's something we need to learn about responding to the drawing of the Spirit of God. We need to learn that. We need to learn to say, I surrender. Yes, Lord. I have no idea why you're speaking to me about this, but here I go. It's a good thing. So whoever it is, come on. Just obey God. Let him do what he's doing in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ladies, some of you ladies come over here and stand with Donna. She may be up here saying, I don't know why I'm coming, but God's saying come. So that's fine. But there's some... That couldn't come by themselves. They need to see somebody else come. Come on now. 
Come on, church. We got time. It's Mother's Day. Moms rejoice over this kind of stuff. Christian moms do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Michael. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to do an offering for these guys. Make your checks to Life Changer Church. You can give on the app. You can give any of the normal ways we do things around here. Just make sure you note it. Melissa will sort it. Office will take care of it tomorrow. And so, uh, so we're going to do that. But here's how we're going to do it. Brother David, I just want you to put two or three guys out with bags around the back of the church. And as you leave, you put your offering in those bags. Okay? Let God speak to your heart. I'm going to pray for us. God's going to speak to our heart. We're going to make a donation. You're just going to bless these guys. They're leaving here tomorrow. She'll be ministering on Wednesday night somewhere in Missouri over toward Cape Girardeau. And then over the weekend somewhere else in Indiana. And so they're on a summer tour. They're, they're going to be preaching almost every day and every other day. And so we want to bless them. We're glad they were here. Tonight, 6 o'clock. Tonight, 6 o'clock. Everybody say 6 o'clock. We're going to have a miracle service. Now, I'm going to give the benediction. Y'all do the offering. Go get your kids. If you'd like for Sister Joanna to pray for you, and there's no way you can be back tonight, you come back in here. And she and Jenny and I, or I will, or whoever we can find, the altar ministers, we will stay here and pray with you. God loves you. God loves you. Whether you're hurting physically, emotionally, mentally, it doesn't matter what the challenge is. God has an answer for you. He has an answer for you. If it's not a miracle, it's a word of wisdom. If it's not a word of wisdom, it's a solution. God has made a way of escape through the Lord Jesus Christ and his cross. If it's the burden of sin, God can take it off of you. If it's confusion or consternation, God can help you. I'm telling you, the king is in the house. So can we do the offering that way? Say yes. We can do the offering that way. The guys will be in the back, and they'll be ready to receive your gift for these guys, and we'll bless them. Uh, check out their table out there. It's got stuff on it. Buy everything on it. Suits me. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours. May you know him in the power of his resurrection. May you know him in the comfort of the Spirit. And may you know him as your everlasting friend every day and every hour. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We will be here in the front of the church if you would like to have prayer.